Hello. Hello. <laughs> Welcome to the second uh, Taiwan Film Week in the Understanding Taiwan Through Film and Documentary series. Uh, welcome. I'm Zhang Yu. I'm the Deputy uh, Director of the Center of Taiwan Studies at SOAS. And you can see all our colleagues are here. The director is actually the, uh, the, the boy controlling the line. <laughs> and our colleague here, actually uh, uh, Mr. Nikki Elsfer, he's actually controlling the, uh, your visual uh, uh, pleasure here. <laughs> and of course, our uh, 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 um, Jewel <laughs> Law here, she's controlling all your visual uh, uh, appearance. <laughs> Later on, we'll be shown in our Facebook. So do smile when you see her, OK? OK. Um, tonight, um, we are very honored to have a, a very special guest here. And you must know that you can see director He Zhao Ti is here. So please give her a warm welcome and put your hands together. Really to her want to say something to you. Just you know, just a few words. Thank you. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, very happy to be here and uh, uh, I'd like to especially thank to uh, uh, Solas uh, to invite me to be here in London. Uh, so I just uh, see some Simple, very short words to you that uh, uh, this film is uh, my earlier uh, work, and uh, well, it's, it was a very special experience for me. Uh, well, it's a it's a story about uh, some gangsters in southeastern Taiwan. Um, so we worked together. The shooting time was about, the production time was about one year. So uh, the shooting crew uh, went there to, um, we worked together with the gangsters almost like one year. But, uh, very special experience. Uh, so I look forward to the Q&A session and welcome any kind of question. Any kind? Any kind. No worries. Uh, I hope you enjoy the film. Thank you. Just a few uh, uh, words about this film. Sorry. It's my duty to, to say something about it. Um, well, tonight we're showing the uh, uh, He uh, 2006 film, The Gangster's God. And um, this documentary is a rare feast, um, well, you know, because it's combining local rituals, uh, popular religions, and also, of course, the cinematic magic, because you can see quite a lot of uh, uh, exciting uh, visual uh, treats there. After the screening, of course, uh, she will answer, she said, you can ask any questions. Uh, um, don't ask too naughty questions, okay? Uh, Her daughter is both a producer and filmmaker. In recent years, she has also taken up the post as the production director for the Taiwan office of the CNEX. I suspect it's called Chinese NEX. Is that right? It's a, a particular foundation to promote um, new, oh, new documentaries. Right. Made Chinese from Chinese society. Thank you very much. So it's CNEX, so keep your eyes on that because I think they got Beijing, Taipei, and Hong Kong offices. Yes. I did do my work. Okay, <laughs> good. <laughs> okay, and although the subject matters of her works uh, range widely, uh, her films has always focused on minority groups, political issues, and social injustice. In recent years, she's particularly concerned with the devastating uh, effect of uh, globalization and the hyper-consumerism on the most uh, disadvantaged groups and, of course, the environment. In contrast to tomorrow's 
three films you should come because they are more fascinating, um, which really deal with the brutal uh, impact of globalization to the local. Uh, tonight's film, uh, The Gangster Score, presents a different dimension of the rural society in this modern world. So it's quite exciting and uh, uh, lots of contrasts there. So before we show the film, I would like to use the opportunity to thank the Ministry of Culture, who grant us uh, the, the right to show this film. So um, without their permission, we won't be able to show this. And uh, there's no one here to represent them. <laughs> so I, I don't really need to say it, sorry. <laughs> without further ado, let's show the film. And thank you very much, and, um, enjoy it. Among these these temples, uh, I, I mean the smaller temples. How how how, how can one recognize which temples are usually associated with the dancers? And about uh, uh, besides the the, the and 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 Make, make involved and, and, and I wonder why, why, why they don't need to to go away because how much of a go away and I do say say they 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 don't why they don't need to ask for permission of, of, of the god to 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 design who is 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 the 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 <音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音> 這個是怎麼樣判斷的,那個廟宇跟跟黑道宇。嗯,呃,the Mostly something related to, to the against this, more or less, especially in Taiwan. There are a, there a lot of temples, Taoist temples. And uh, the second question is that the Bajajian or the Han Dan Yan the Bajajian, why did they decide to choose not the Han Dan Yan? Why did they not have the Excuse me, can you repeat the question in English, please? I'm not catching everything. But oh, this second one, I think I'm loud enough. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, the gentleman here is actually asking that uh, why these people can decide for themselves that they represented God, uh, not the certain kind of divine um, process, you know, being decided by the God. Uh, actually, the temple director. He could choose who can stand up as a represented uh, French, French uh, Han Dan Yan. Yeah, because you, you can tell it, it's not, it's something about gods and something about people's life. Yeah, so when the temple director said, okay, you are good enough to stand up, because it's kind of like a, it's not only a, a a ritual is also a kind of like 
like a show among gangster society. So if you could stand there in a perform in a very good way, it means uh, you are people can trust you to to have some business with you to get some debt collection or some bigger business. That's true. So it's so that's why I said it's not it's not only about gods. It, it's also about the. Uh, in the everyday life, in the people's life, the connections, the business. Uh, so, uh, so the director could choose who can stand up over there. This he was asking, sorry, he was asking the, uh, is there any other gods similar to this sort of uh, ritual that you need the to gangster, go gangsters will, will uh, related, uh, associated with gangsters uh, <coughs> clubs? Mm. Well, as much as I know, because I'm, in the, I'm not the, I'm not the, I'm not doing the religious research, uh, but as much as I know, in Taiwan, uh, only uh, Han Dan Ye is uh, the gangster's god. Yeah, the only one. Mm. Any questions? Oh, <laughs> okay. How about from this side to that side? I'm sorry. So you first, then the gentleman there, then. The, the orange coat one first, thank you. So, how did you get the permission from the gangsters? How did you get to know them? Okay. So, um, and permission not only from the, the, the gangsters film, but also from their family. Because I don't know if, if it's the same in Taiwan, but the way I come from, people tend to be very really sensitive about showing the family of the criminals, because that, that if children's faces are shown, people they may get bullied at school, or uh, your dad is against. <laughs> okay, can we take two questions at a time, then otherwise, you know, we probably drag on. No, no, you are the second one. Thank you. Uh, I just wanted to know, what is the benefit of, uh, of a religion or an organized religion to be involved with uh, the gangster community and vice versa? Uh, is, is, you know, I, would, I would imagine that money is the, is the main uh, influencer and uh, motivator. So is there money involved in this religion? And if so, how does that, how does that, uh, how does that transpire? Mm -hmm. Okay, we, we deal with the two things first, okay? Uh, can, I, can I add to that? Maybe that no, 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 no. Please don't. said it's a parallel that does that religion benefit financially? I think, but the, the thing is, okay, never mind. Okay, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, the first one, Mm -hmm. Well, it was a very interesting story. Uh, I uh, I had two colleagues, uh, male colleagues. They came to Taidong with me, so we had three of us. We had three of us to visit the director because we know they are gangsters, so it's very important to get their permission to film them. <laughs> so it was about one year later before the film was finished. Uh, so when we uh, get into the temple, uh, te the director's office is not in the temple. It's a, in actually it's a next door of his his home, his place. Uh, so we sat down. Uh, so he asked my colleagues, uh, "What what can I do for you? Why why do you come to visit me?" Uh, my colleagues said, she's the film director, you should ask her. <laughs> so the rest is, oh, okay. So she asked me. So I told him that blah, 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 I want to 
film your story. It's a documentary. And he said, okay, how can I help you? So I thought, does that mean yes? Mm -hmm. So I asked, and he said, yeah, of course. How, how could I help you? I thought it was, I wondered why it was so easy, because <laughs> <laughs> I had- He gave you permission to film those two gangsters. Did it everybody? Film to film everybody in Under Hong his Kong. domain. His oh. <laughs> uh, because in my, in, I, I thought when I was in Taipei, I thought I was very nervous and anxious about that trip because I thought, oh, we know they have, they, they have gone. So my scenarios in my in my imaginary was, why do you want to film us <laughs> to the gardens? <laughs> like that. So when I got the permission, I, I was so surprised and I, I was very happy. Uh, but then later it was not very easy. It was very difficult. Uh, why? Not because of their family. But you could tell it's a very uh, chauvinist society. Yeah. Uh, women always listen to their husbands or, or their boyfriends. So every woman in front of them, in front of the brothers, they are neither, uh, they are neither the, the gestures, uh, female gestures, uh, colleague, or their lover. But I don't want to be neither, <laughs> neither of that. So when I work with them, I had to be not like this. I, I could be very uh, nothing. Of, I, I cannot remind them that I, I am a female. So I work, I work as a man, something like a man, man's life. So in that way, I could be equal to them to talk about what, what we want and what we are going to do in the film. And about the family, because the uh, filming time was uh, longer enough, was long enough to build the relationship and the trust between them. Yeah, so um, time could solve a lot of questions, problems. Yeah. So that's the process. And uh, about your money. question, about money. Um, we well, not just some... about money, but the benefit on both sides of the religion and the, and the gangster community. What is the benefit mm. on both sides? Uh, I interviewed some people, like the, uh, there was a woman who ran a jewelry store. Uh, they donate some money, so that for example, they donate uh, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10 pounds, for example. For them, like uh, 2,000 pounds uh, to support the fire, firework. Uh, but some of the, some percentage of the money, uh, they get into the temple, to the director. So in that way, um, those people, those stores, the owners, they uh, support this ritual. So that's why the, this ritual could run uh, year by year in Taitung. Do they get protections? Yes. The jewelry yeah. 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 Okay. As a return, so not always about yeah. money. Yeah. But, you know, also well, local protections. And, <laughs> and God's protection. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So are, so are the, is the jewelry owner, are they a part of the religion or just that's just a payoff to, to give She is, she is kind of like some, uh, the person like uh, another part of like a female role. They are, some, sometimes they are, she was like their colleague. In Taiwan we say da jie da. Yes, then the next two questions. 
Hi there. Hi. Uh, my question is, how did you write uh, a topic for your documentary? And also, in your film... You mean film, you write a script? Um, no, the topic generally Just really choose. about uh, dancers. And also, um, I feel... Um, how, do, how did I choose that topic? Yeah, you know, how do you, did it come to you naturally? Were you thinking about it? Oh, or, okay. I also feel that in your film, you show quite okay. humorous and human side of dancers. And, whether that's intentional or it just happened. Okay, and the next one is so we'll pick two. Um, my question kind of relates to the second one there, so yeah, there's the kind of human side of the gangster, um, the little gangsters coming out, like, uh, how are they just generally perceived in Taiwan? Are they, like, um, I mean, because they're being so open and so kind of, the, like they're acting in a kind of communal way in the local area, how are they still seen as bad or are they just seen as like we have to tolerate them otherwise we're going to eat us up or something like that? Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if I um, this film was uh, this we I started at the year 2004 uh, and uh, I think it was 19 1907 I was not a film director I was a writer for a magazine. So uh, I wrote a story about the, this ritual. Uh, at that time, I did some research, some kind of field work, field work <coughs> about uh, these gangsters. So I was very curious about, about um, if I stay longer with them, how would this story be? Uh, because when I was a writer, I didn't have enough time to uh, to know things about them, to know more. Because what they told you was, I knew there were more stories, but they didn't trust me, so they couldn't tell me. So somehow I, I just thought, thought about that. I don't talk about those brothers very often. Uh, so um, I think it would it just happened because at the at the very beginning I just tried because I I I didn't believe that they could they could give me the permission to to show them. So I just say told myself that okay I'll just try. If if I got it then I'll try something more. And then it was a very interesting journey for myself to make, to make myself to know more about the underworld of, of Taiwan. Um, the topics as well. So just, not just about uh, gangsters, but how about other topics? Because it's very different. Every film is different. Yeah. Yes, because the topics change. Um, this one actually. Oh, okay. Good. Okay. okay. This one? Okay. That's it. Okay. And the other one's about the impression. Um, yeah, of course. Uh, people in Taiwan, in Taidong, they, are, they look down upon those gangsters, brothers. But for me, it was, it was, not, it was not like that. Because uh, the gangsters in Taiwan, they are, they are very different kinds of gangsters. And the gangsters in Taidong, like the Han Dangye gangster, um, they didn't, they don't really do things as serious or as terrible as the west coast of Taiwan. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so for me, there must be some reason to make them like that, some uh, political, economical, Big round. Yeah. Uh, 
Um, so as much as, as I knew, it was like uh, uh, some economical issue in their parents' family. Couldn't support them to have better education. So they had no choice. So they could only choose a life like that. Uh, but for people in Taiwan, <coughs> most of the people they look down upon them. So this ritual is very rich for me because uh, for a, a year, for the 365 days, they are they are living in the in the underworld, in the black so-called black world but only four days or three days in one year, they, they are heroes. Yeah, but once they become hero, the process was very painful to use the firework to, to torture them. So that's why I think the rich, the, this ritual is very rich and uh, very interesting for me. So that's all, that is also the reason why I choose this topic. I think in thank you for the movie. In part of the movie there was a bit when the head of the temple actually become actually become a counselor later. So, um, I find out it really fascinating, but somehow quite normal, because maybe in rural Taiwan, actually these people being perceived by Volta, they actually get things done, or a lot of areas they find if you go through the whole diplomatic process, you don't get things done. So my question actually is, um, is how do you find, because your subject sometimes is about globalization, uh, do you find that like sort of old world? I don't think that's not old because it's still quite relevant. It's still happening in a lot of places in Taiwan. Do you find that conflicting with the idea of democracy or no problem at all? This temple people, if they are answers, that's their vote because they've been seen. Do you find it's, um, how, do you, how do you see this sort of gangster politics? Merge together system in current Taiwan. Do you find it's an old, it's an old-fashioned way or like non-democratic? I'm kind of curious about that. Okay, and we got another question. I suspect come connect to that one. I think so. Uh, it's a culturally and socially um, very uh, innovative film. But th does the Honda Festival still on today? Because from a civilization point of view, this could not be accepted uh, as you throw some power on the people. It would be banned in civilized country or cities. You don't have this in Hong Kong. You don't have this in Beijing. So in Taichung, as you mentioned, uh, this is kind of purify their spirit, kind of resistance to their life, that they can struggle and so that they are real living people. So I mean, the, the good thing is you take into the particular of the Taichung people and so the vast uh, difference in people living in the present Taiwan. And it was from nine years ago. I don't know whether the Honda Festival is still on. And like this, people throw in firecracker on, on you, on me. Certainly, I won't be that. So, <laughs> what's the question? So <laughs> is this happening? Yeah. Okay, oh, you accept okay. it. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Sorry. <laughs> it's very complicated for me. I, for now, I don't have any answer. I think it's, it's because I'm so close to Taiwan. And uh, I 
think it's uh, something related to we are very new country to have democracy, so-called democracy system, so-called democracy system. Like a, it's like a fast food for our society, and. Uh, Uh, since the last year, something happened very, very interesting. Maybe I cannot answer your question directly. Uh, maybe some of you have seen a film uh, called uh, Sunflower Occupation. No? Taiyang Yuan. Taiyang Yuan. Mm. Uh, I was the producer for that film. Uh, and what I noticed was uh, the younger generation in Taiwan, they tried to change something, some political problems in Taiwan. Yeah. So for me, of course, the Hei Dao Piao Bai, it is not very, it is not good at all. Yeah, because uh, People cannot get uh, equal opportunities in that process. Yeah, but uh, since last year, I think something changed, uh, had changed gradually, little by little. Sorry, I cannot answer your question. <laughs> Uh, the ritual changed a lot because uh, this ritual become like uh, for tourists more, like year by year. And uh, well, because the director he became a pol politician. Yeah. Politician. You mean the Li Jianzhi? Of the director of the temple. Yeah. Uh, so when I came back to visit him, he was not happy because at the time he was a politician already. Oh, he so changed so a lot, really. It was so interesting. He was a little upset on me because he said uh, the mayor. Uh, asked him that, how could you allow this female film director to show so many things about the gestures? Because people in Taiwan would be afraid of um, to, to visit Taidong as a tourist because <laughs> <laughs> this ritual or they will be afraid of you brothers. So don't do that again. <laughs> so he was, the director was not happy about that. Mm. I saw two hands first, so I'm sorry, you, you two will be the next lot. Michael and uh, David raised hands first, sorry. So Michael, yes please, I'm sorry about that. Uh, yeah, uh, these guys had all been in jail at various times, which suggests which there are some people, cool. sorry? Which guy? Uh, I mean, oh, you mean those two? Seem to have spent time in jail, which suggests there are some forces of law and order <laughs> operating. <laughs> and to what extent, uh, dare I ask, uh, are the police infiltrated <laughs> and the judges infiltrated? Um, but nevertheless, there seem to be some straight police and straight judges. Is that is that reasonable? <笑>他說既然這些人都都呃因為有犯罪然後有有進監牢可見的這個社會似乎還是有治安還是警察跟這個法官也都運作還算正常你覺得呢我這是 several times so <笑> Nickel Jail University. That's another way of ed education. Oh, no. Yes. 
Yeah, I had a couple of questions about the impact of this documentary. Um, only, only two. One of them was, was um, how did the, um, uh, the figures in the film react when they first saw the film? And, and um, another thing that crossed my mind was, when we looked at all, watched all we learned yesterday, one of the really interesting things was the way that it made the town a tourist centre. Uh -huh. So to what extent did your film actually um, <laughs> make this kind of uh, festival even more popular as a tourist attraction? popular or less? <laughs> uh, well, I, I've already told you the director's reaction when he uh, saw my film. He was not happy about that. And uh, little he, he was very happy and uh, he asked me to stay there to watch that again with him. Aww. Actually, I found him uh, in the day because this film was screened uh, in public TV station in Taiwan. So at the, the screening, the premiere screening night, I got a phone call from him because at the very last uh, days of editing, until then I couldn't find little E. So when I got his phone call, I was very happy. I said, where were you? I couldn't find you. Yeah. And he said because uh, he was uh, he he had something serious uh, with he would be put in jail if he he was caught by the police so he ran away to north of Taiwan <laughs> so then I vis visit him in Taidong I went back to find them and uh, gave him a DVD to him, so he asked me to stay there and watch DVD with him together, and he was, was very happy, and he said, oh, I was very handsome, <laughs> <laughs> very cute. And how about that? Uh, well, I think that the film was very popular. Uh, he, said, uh, he wrote a letter to me, only three, li uh, three, three lines, very warm and very very sweet he said uh, in his letter uh, he said he was very happy that to see himself in this documentary and uh, he would keep the dvd to be a very good uh, uh, kept the memory of his younger uh, days yeah how about Archer? Archer, uh, he also ran away. Yeah, he ran away from Taidong because the mayor, uh, the mayor said uh, the mayor had some negotiation with the uh, cement, 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 cement uh, factory. Uh, but the cement factory didn't get the mayor. The, the money they negotiate, not enough money. So the mayor told Achen that uh, you get out of my, my city, my county. If you come back, I will put you in, in the jail. Mm -hmm. yeah, so he ran out of title. How about yeah. his family? Sorry. Mm -hmm. Because you actually put most your emphasis on Achen. And their relationship. So, what happened to the family? Uh, the family is still, still there. Still there. Sorry to barge in. So, I recognize they're not really gangsters, um, they're more low level criminals. <laughs> 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 
helpful compared to the West. Maybe that's why they would like, why they accepted the attention to have the documentary. Um, but they do make a, a significant contribution to, to the London Festival. Uh, on the other hand, it's, um, it, it, it feeds their, their own needs because it's like a kind of initiation into the gangster life. Um, I want to ask, what was the most pleasurable part of making a documentary and what was the uh, most uh, worrying part Making a documentary. Uh, okay, yes. Um, yeah, um, some people I feel may say that uh, the film reflects negatively on Taiwanese. Uh, society and Taiwanese politics, especially. Um, so my question is, uh, why is the Ministry of Culture promoting? Okay, yes. Sorry? Oh, did you say uh, Ministry of Culture? Yeah. I, did, I got there on duty, so I'm not You should ask the Minister of Culture. Why is it a very full cultural uh, side of that? Because we do have 30 something. Uh, Taiwanese film being selected, uh, promoted uh, abroad. We don't only select uh, things positive. That's actually a good way to, to face up to the world saying we do have problems. Right. Not problems, different things. Okay, yeah, so considering some other things I've heard about um, Taiwanese uh, like military Poly politics, which might, think, might make you think that they wouldn't want to promote this kind of thing. Very wisely they do. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and another question. Oh. My answer was is different now, but before uh, it was this film was finished uh, eight years ago. Yeah. At that time I was very happy about it. Oh, I made a film about gangsters, about those brothers. It was very difficult, but I made it. But now, when I look back off of that, those days, I thought, uh, well, I, I think life is very complicated, and the people, uh, we want, we, if we want to survive in the world, it's, it's not easy. So we need very different kind of professionals to survive in our we are in our different societies. So for those brothers, that's their professionals that they had to they had to negotiate to different people and they live in the border line of legal, the illegal. So shall I say that's a very interesting experience of things made me happy. Yes and no, very complicated feeling. You feel quite that The most difficult. Yeah. The, most, the most difficult part, the most special. The difficult, difficult part is, well, I, I always have some very sensitive awareness about uh, gender issue, and uh, and also I'm a woman. Um, it's really difficult to work in this field 
yeah, to filming. Um, it's not very happy for me to shoot in the field, shooting a story which is very uh, chauvinist. Mm, and uh, actually, I really want to to produce a story about their their wives or their daughters. Mm, maybe it's the next film. <laughs> I don't know. Um, you want to film the, the wives and the daughters during, during filming? Yes. About their barriers and constraints? They were in the filming, yeah. But every time when the camera and the me uh, getting close to to those women, they just they were very shy and the day, trying to avoid us. Yeah, so it was not it's very very difficult to film them. Um, so that's very difficult for me, and made me feel there must be something wrong inside. But I cannot put too much emphasis in that phenomenon because there is something ethnic issue inside of this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because my protect protagonists are those brothers. So somehow for me, I couldn't film a documentary like that. Yeah, to, to say something like that they are, it's not, it's not very good relationship. In, it's not a good uh, uh, gender, uh, relationship in this field. Yeah, I cannot do that. So it made me a little bit uh, upset about that. Mm. Can I ask a question? I, I was gagging to ask. Uh, sorry. Because it's a really interesting film because it's a, a kind of very masculine film. There's a in it. But you use a woman's narrator and you use a very flat, try to be very neutral. 用了非常中性,没有高低起,非常女性,非常rational narrator,用一个很理性的声音去讲它. Why? It's quite interesting. For me, it's a seemingly a very deliberate decision. 似乎是非常刻意的一个决定,为什么? Mm. Well, you can watch the my fancy high heels. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Is it the same? Or totally opposite? Uh, some, some of my close friends, they said my film uh, style are very kind of cold or calm. Understated. <laughs> Part of my personality, I guess. Oh, yeah. Part. Right. <laughs> Part. And uh, well, I have many, many different part of personality. Of course, and that is reflected in your words, of course. To so. yeah. exactly. Oh, you talk about the uh, about the music. Oh. Like the music. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> what an expert. She loves the music. She said she's the expert to appreciate that. Uh, I use traditional elements and electronic elements. Uh, so when I talk to composer, uh, I told him that we have four main characters. Uh, the temple director, and uh, E, and uh, Achen, and the little E. So for the relationship to this ritual and the, the religion, we have different percentage of, uh, of that, those parts. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, as the traditional music element, uh, the percentage is, uh, this, this part is the most. So I use uh, traditional instrument 
to represent the temple director. But for little e, uh, I asked the composer to uh, recompose or to use the traditional element like the the sound of drum, but do the music into the electronic style. So for the four uh, characters, I use different percentage of the traditional music. Yeah. Did you notice that? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> <I like it. laughs> Any more questions? So can I ask the question again? Uh, the dancers in your, sorry, uh, the dancers in your film all look very happy. Um, <laughs> were they all pretty much happy all the time? Uh, would you say they're happier than most normal people or less? Hmm. <laughs> they're just like me and you. Yeah, yeah life is up and down. Uh, I have to say that when they are upset, I couldn't really film, film that part. Yeah, maybe because they are, they are men. Maybe because uh, they didn't want to tell me that part. Uh, but Achen, I think he told me the most of his uh, real life. Yeah, so I appreciate that, and I thank him very much. Two more there. Thank you. Um, the film felt it's about Lucio, but it very it felt like the just an observation when you when there's a Lucio, it, you have um, fast forward it. When they bring a Lucio, you have quick music and you fast forward. Then you go into their story. Then you hit another Lucio and you fast forward it. Is it like a but? You kind of use that as well, like it's almost like they redeem that scene in the end. Is it like your structure for this film deliberately? It's not like a lot of emphasis on this ritual, but a lot like a more emphasis on the each of these four characters and the story and how they do you consider use this like as if they redeem themselves? Like they Make that sacrifice, like sort of like a ritualistic thing. Is that the somehow sort of play undertone of your film? That's my question, but not a lot on the ritual itself. Is that what you try to aim to catch? So it did not become like an anthropology of a religion, but more about these people going through life and uh, have like a sacrifice moment and they become a legend somehow. That kind of undertone. I wonder what you thought about that. Um, I have a question about uh, the the backlash, maybe that uh, these guys suffered and why they had to go in hiding. Uh, ah Chung, in particular, and particularly, he was a little forthright with his uh, comments about you know collecting debtors' organs and <laughs> delivering them to the temple director and you know these sorts of things uh did that play any part in why they had to go into hiding or you know and would, would that you know have anything to do with uh with any legal uh, uh consequences uh because they were so forthright and also i wanted to know about the additional footage that you filmed that wasn't in the documentary that could possibly be used in legal proceedings in Taiwan. Not understanding, not understanding how you know the legal system works there. Well, if they could, you know, require you to turn over that information. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Okay. 
呃。tricky， <笑>呃，第二个问题是说，呃，比如说，呃，阿成是所有角色之中最坦白的，呃，最愿意跟你分享他去怎么杀人，什么怎么样收债。那么，呃，他之所以后来，呃，逃亡北部，是不是因为你的呃骗子带出了什么样，让他啊、呃、入罪，或者是说你有一些呃多余的？片段在台湾的法律程序里头，是不是会会被用来起诉？我听起来很恐怖的。Sorry， <笑> yes， 